Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, the 12th of August, 2011. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, filling in for John McElroy today. So let's get to it. Yesterday, we reported that Rebecca Linlin, the Director of Strategic Review at IHS Automotive, downgraded their sales forecast in the U.S. for the rest of the year. Now here's why she says this will be the case. It's everything that's built up earlier in the year, and it certainly is focusing on consumer behavior. When we look at how poor consumer confidence is, when we look at the limited opportunities for jobs, for income growth, for housing, we still don't have recovery in housing by any means. And that's really a basic support, especially of auto sales, and we just don't have those numbers yet. Now we'll have to see if automakers reduce production schedules for the fourth quarter. GM announced that it has selected a second battery source to power its electric vehicles. A123 Systems will provide lithium-ion batteries for GM's future EVs, but the specific vehicles they'll be going in will be announced later. The batteries will be produced at A123's plant in Livonia, Michigan, and GM already has a battery contract with LG Chem out of Korea, which are used to power the Volt. It's not too surprising to see GM do this, because automakers don't like putting all their eggs in with one supplier, in case something goes wrong. Ford announced it has promoted Barb Samarjic to head of product development in Europe starting September 1st. Samarjic, who you might remember from her appearance on Autoline After Hours, will also keep her current position as Ford's head of global vehicle engineering, noise, vibration and harshness, and global vehicle evaluation and verification. Samarjic replaces Frank Davis who will take on a new role in the company, but this is clearly a sign that Ford has, is grooming Samarjic for bigger things. Car tires are one of those things that never seem to change. They're round and black, made of rubber and maybe some steel belts, but they always need to be inflated from time to time. Goodyear is looking to change that by advancing research on tires that will inflate themselves as they go down the road. The research, partially funded by the U.S. and Luxembourg governments, is working to produce tires that will yield better fuel efficiency by maintaining consistent air pressure. Goodyear estimates that passenger cars and commercial trucks on the road today can see between 2.5 and 3.3 percent poorer fuel economy due to underinflated tires. So kids, check those tires. The Sergio show gets preachy and the media genuflex. What's wrong with this picture? More after this. Drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. By now, we're all familiar with the Sergio show, referring to, of course, Chrysler's Uber CEO, Sergio Marchionne. The industry's favorite micromanager is enjoying his day in the sun right now, especially thanks to some of my colleagues in the media who are positively gushing over Sergio's handling of Chrysler. I'll paraphrase some of the coverage for you. The Sergio Show runs on espresso and three hours of sleep a night. The Sergio Show is a dynamo that will lead Chrysler and Detroit out of the wilderness. The Sergio Show is speaking with, we must now drop everything and stand at attention so we can bask in his brilliance, or something like that. Except that the Sergio Show is something altogether different if you step away from the hype. That Sergio is the opportunist of the century certainly can't be disputed. After all, here was a guy who was basically handed the keys to Chrysler for nothing by an Obama administration desperate to keep the domestic automobile industry from imploding. And before that, he made his bones in the business by turning around Fiat, a company so screwed up that even if he had just reduced the espresso machine count at corporate headquarters by half, he would have looked like an industrial hero in Italy, a country that, I'm sad to say, has a real problem making money in the car business, unless we're talking about Ferrari, of course. But Sergio is suddenly acting like the sage of the automotive world while suggesting that he's markedly different from his downtrodden colleagues in Detroit 
at least the ones who were here BS, that's before Sergio, as he took great pains to point out at the annual Center for Automotive Research Industry Conference up in Traverse City last week, saying, and I quote, these are business people who did not grow up and become conditioned to doing business in Detroit, Sergio said. They accept the challenge of the new without being afraid. Well, I'm not buying it. I do know this. Sergio is setting up Chrysler not for a long period of sustained success and growth as he insists, but for yet another looming crisis in the company's roller coaster history when he steps away in 2015 or thereabouts. Because he's going to leave behind a corporate management structure that is totally dependent on one guy and a system of doing things based on that one guy. And oh, by the way, that one guy, it's Sergio, and only Sergio. And when you consider the possibility of Chrysler being paralyzed by chaos and indecision when Sergio walks away with his untold millions, it's not such a brilliant picture for Chrysler, now is it? I would like to see some of my esteemed colleagues in the media get over this genuflection stage when it comes to covering the Sergio show. Because it's so beyond tedious now, I can't even imagine what another four years of it will be like. The real story here is this. Chrysler's very survival depends on Fiat and Chrysler assimilating, combining, meshing, and blending their disparate endeavors together according to Sergio's grand plan. And that is still very much a work in progress and a will see of gargantuan proportions from where I sit. It would be nice to see my colleagues focus on that for a change. And that's the high octane truth for this week. Be sure to tune in for AutoLine After Hours from the Woodward Dream Cruise next Thursday night. We want to thank our signature sponsor, Mopar, for making it possible for us to come to you live from Woodward Avenue. Join us from the biggest classic car show in the world. And speaking of webcasts, you can catch another episode of Roundabout live tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific. This week, Christian Conover from the Roundel Table podcast guest host. So tune in at AutolineDetroit.tv for a fun start to the weekend. And that wraps up today's report. Again, I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist. Thanks for watching, and this is me leaving. <laughs>